Good morning. And thank you for joining us online again today. I extend the powerful presence of Jesus to you today. Welcome to our worship where you and your journey, spiritual journey, are always welcome. Please join us in our opening song. Jesus be with all of you today and forever. Awesome. Thank you. Please be seated. We are glad that you are with us, and we invite you to make your presence known by leaving a comment on Facebook or messaging or emailing Pastor Rich. For those in attendance in the building, please use the participation card found in the pocket in front of you, and you can leave it on the seat before you leave the building today. I give thanks and praise that during this time of the pandemic, we continue to be the church. Thank you for your support, and please continue your commitment of tithes and offerings to this faith community. Consider setting up an MCCQC monthly bill pay through your online banking, or mail your giving to the church office. Thank you for whatever you can do. Our offering plates are always full of people, and for that, we praise God. Amen. Please consider also sending us your email so that we can stay in touch and we can send you our weekly prayer list with information and inspiration. And also join us for our virtual social time at noon every Sunday on Zoom, meeting ID number 816-0556-0300. Password 
763-9869. If you didn't get that, this information will appear again on the slide at the end of our service. And I have an announcement to make this morning. I want to invite everyone to please put on your calendar Friday, October 2nd. It's our spaghetti dinner fundraiser. Uh, you know, we didn't get our monies through the uh, fair parking like we usually do. And so this is really our first um, fundraiser since the pandemic. And we would really appreciate your help. We're doing it for lunch or dinner, and it's takeout only. So, you know, order some lunches with your office, with your family, some dinners, whatever. Uh, so it's $10 a person. You get a salad and garlic bread and, and, and a pasta. Um, desserts are also available for a small fee, extra charge. And so Friday, October the 2nd, please put that on your calendar and plan to come. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Linda Nimrick to come forward to present a Reverend Robert Darst Community to Our Service Award. Emmy Roberts, please come forward. And we love you, Emily. <laughs> now I have to tell you something special about Emmy. Other than my husband, Emmy Roberts is the only person in this church who gets in my pants. <laughs> and she does, frequently, because I have a zipper that needs repair. Or Thank you, Emmy, for so all that you do on an individual level for this church, for Feed the Hungry. part of the life of MCCQC. Let us take a moment now and come together as we pray together as God's people. Lord of love, we praise you and thank you for you have wonderfully made us. Thank you for the showers that refresh and renew the face of the earth. Send on us the showers of your Holy Spirit to revive us again. Forgive us, God, for worshiping things instead of you. Remind us that you give us the power to love. May we have love in our hearts, love on our tongues, love in our hearing, love in our sight, love felt in our bodies, love before us, and love behind us. Increase the love within us and our ability to express that love to all those around us. We ask your healing in the lives of all those on our prayer list. Send us your angels with skin on them to do what we can to comfort them and to create your beloved community. Come. Holy Spirit, come. And now, friends here and at home, for what else shall we pray? Michelle Newton. Larry Smith, Ray and Trent, who are his caregivers. Clayton Peterson. Margaret Strauss. The school system. The family of Princess Steve Palmer and Bob Kim. Mother Earth. Jason. My niece's mom. May Jesus' life and your Holy Spirit be our guides as your love and peace envelop and surround us in your many names. Amen. <laughs>
from Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against my foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who revere your name. I will sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Here ends the reading. Hear this good news reading from Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able. Once, being asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. In our world, people say, oh, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. The kingdom of God is within you. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So I have the honor to introduce to you today a special recipient of our outstanding service to the Quad Cities Community Award. Uh, Tina Shore, uh, her, her profession, her job, is to care for these kids and care for the people that are so horribly impacted by our system. And what she has to do on a daily basis sometimes is just not fun. It is, I'll let her tell you a little more about it maybe, but it, it's stressful. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> uh, I persuaded T to, to speak at our March for Equality. Um, twisted her arm a little bit, got her to be president of QC Pride. And since that time, she has gone on to not only preside over QC Pride, but also to uh, inspire others with Tea and Up. Our outstanding service award to the community goes to Tea the Shore. Come on. <laughs> my arm to speak on many <laughs> occasions. He has twisted my arm to speak today. Um, but he is one of those people that when he requests something, you answer because <laughs> you know that he knows something about you that sometimes you don't know about yourself. So I, I, it is an honor to be here today. Um, my birthday was yesterday, so I didn't get too much partying in because I had the message today. But it is definitely an honor. And my message today is on the threshold of loss and revelation. I'll say it again. On the threshold of loss and revelation. There's not one single person on this earth that has not experienced some form of loss, whether it be the loss of a job, a house, a car, a relationship, to, a, to the extreme of losing a loved one. Regardless of who and where you are, loss is a part of life that none of us can avoid. But it is also a part of life that we can learn to navigate differently. Stay with me for a little while. 
The definition of loss is the fact or the process of losing something or someone. It's also defined as the state or feeling of grief when deprived of someone or something of great value. Loss is a game changer that forces us to pause, to freeze, and in a lot of cases, stop. The reality of loss is that it strips, it exposes us, our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses, our inconsistencies. It can also destroy individual lives, families, and communities because of its intense, debilitating factors. Loss is something no one person wants to feel more than once. This is how we've been programmed to view loss, especially loss through death, as there is no recovery from that. But what if, just what if, loss has a bigger message outside of the pain, the suffering, or even a heartbreak? What if the purpose of loss was to infuse our lives with a deeper perspective? An interview with ourselves. A forced one-on-one. -on -one. Now by no means am I implying that loss requires no emotion of hurt, discouragement, or grief. But just think about it. To be human is to know loss. It's inevitable. So is change. Nothing is permanent. But what about evolving this? On the other hand, what is permanent is what loss reveals to you. The revelation of what you didn't know before. What message is to be received by what is now no longer in existence? The answer depends on what you take away from the loss experience or if you accepted the true challenge to change your, perspe your perspective. When we define revelation, we define it as a surprising or previously unknown fact, especially one made known in a dramatic way. It is also defined as the supernatural disclosure to humans of something related to human existence or the world. Hmm. Something made known in a dramatic way. Isn't that exactly how law shows up? Dramatic. When it comes in, it has a way of narrowing our, our lens of life. But if we accept the change in perspective, Revelation provides us with the opportunity to reflect on what matters most, living life in and on purpose. Loss is life's biggest teacher. The question is, are you willing to be a learner? Life is short. If we didn't know that before and now, COVID-19 has forced us to see, feel, and experience that up close and personal more than ever before. Time, as we found, is not on our side. But revelation has showed us through that that relationships we haven't healed or focused on are of great importance as we never know, as this may be our very last chance. It helps to identify. That's what revelation does. Revelation is powerful and, and pivotal in moving forward. I frequently say in my messages that the time is now. And I, as I believe, it most certainly is. Living the lives that we've always dreamed of, loving those most sacred to us while they are here, and being the change that we want to see are all right before us. If only we would stop focusing on the loss and zoom in on the message, the lesson, the revelation. COVID-19 showed us exactly what great loss is, and it has also revealed to us what we needed as well as how far from the things we've gotten, how far from, away from the things that are most important we've gotten. We may never return to the things being the way that they were, and we shouldn't. 
for we are standing on the threshold, also known as the seal of a doorway, defined as a place or point of entering or beginning. The magnitude or intensity that must be exceeded for a certain reaction, phenomenon, result, condition, or to be manifested. Being on the threshold of loss and revelation grants us the opportunity to understand that we cannot have new beginnings, healing, or enter into a new space in life without the existence of both. One does not occur without the other. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Nothing that we've been through in life will be wasted, guys. We were not put on this earth to suffer. We were placed here to live out a purpose of greatness. Now I leave you with this. There will be times, times when you are unsure, times when you are discouraged, and times when loss seems to be too much to bear, but take life lens and zoom out with the understanding that loss strips Revelation identifies, and the threshold presents a new beginning. But if you need strength to get there, keep Psalm 61 and 2 inscribed in your heart. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. There you will find direction. Thank you. this morning and I hope that you will take up that challenge when we journey we don't have to journey alone to face those challenges we journey with a God who loves us and goes with us let us take a few minutes and prepare ourselves for this time of communion allow God to remove anything that keeps you from communion with the holy from communion with creation or from communion with your brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Blow winds of change, blow. 
Help us to welcome them. Help us to trim our sails, to take the best advantage of the winds of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Gather us in that Spirit's tether as together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator, in heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news of Jesus the Christ. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we have this odd little ritual, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, Holy Communion. However you understand it to be, it is a means of feeding your soul, if you allow it. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. Holy One, with these simple gifts of fruit of the field and fruit of the vine, we remember you, God, and we remember love, and we are encouraged as we stand at the threshold to move, to be moved, to hear your revelation for us. Thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, enjoy dinner. Amen. All are welcome at this table. You do not need to be a member of this church or of any church. And at home, whatever you have in front of you, I have blessed it. And God has blessed it. So receive, receive, receive. <laughs>
are so much more than we are. And we are more than we are alone when we are with you. Thank you, God. For all that we have received and for all that is yet to come, we ask your blessings upon it. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able for our closing hymn. We go into a world that needs our forgiving touch. Bring peace and hope to others, sharing God's love with them. When we fear loss, we will seek your revelation. Yay, Jesus!